Hello, today I'm going to be playing Shovel Knight. And this is a game which I also got earlier this year, and a friend of mine from work recommended it to me, so... I actually do have a save file from before on this, but to tell you the truth, I'm actually going to create a brand new one, so yeah. I'm going to just call myself Chris, like, sir. Don't really care of... wait, what? Oh, I gotta go to done. Yeah, okay. I'm really not doing this right, am I? Yeah, that one's also called Chris as well. Really imaginative naming, isn't it? But yeah, I'm not gonna skip this in case you in case you do want an explanation of what the story is about. So basically they went over to stop the um So basically they went over to stop the Enchantress and then Shield Knight goes missing, who was like Shovel Knight's partner in crime. Actually, no, the Enchantress comes out after this. So, essentially, this game's quite similar to uh, Mega Man. And that was the intro. So, basically, this is the first level. That's one thing I do like about the game though, it's got a very good soundtrack, I mean, I would argue it's one of the best I've heard in a while. Then again, I said the exact same thing about Freedom Planet, I mean, it's all these like indie games that are trying to relive the uh, old classics, uh, they tend to just nail the soundtrack completely. Oh yeah, by the way, those things are save points. Well, not save points, checkpoints, rather. In theory, you can actually break them down and uh, get the um, get more gems out of it, but of course it will destroy the checkpoint, so if you die, what that means is you're going to end up going further back to the level. So essentially it's like a risk versus reward thing. Something that doesn't make sense here. Why is this dragon shooting bubbles? I mean, I'm pretty sure it's meant to shoot fire, not like bubbles. <laughs> Actually hit him in the face. Something else to keep watch for in this level is the fact that there tend to be a lot of secrets in it. But generally those are marked pretty well. I mean, for example, if you see one of his markings, you just hit, and then... Boom. There's actually been quite a few videos on this level about how it teaches you how to play the game. I got a feeling those spikes are actually insta-kill. I'm not going to try it, but... I know for a fact there's a lot of insta-kill stuff in this game. Oh yeah, those things are for unlocking music tracks in the sound. Oh 
Other than that, there's nothing else to really say. There's nothing else I can really talk about in this level. I mean, it's just your typical Welsh is like first level of the game. I mean, not discrediting the other levels at all here, but... This is like the quintessential first level that teaches you everything that you need to know about the game. Now just jump up, then we got waterfalls. That's another thing I like, this game is eight this game is designed as like an 8-bit NES style and they absolutely nailed it graphically. I mean, for an 8-bit game, it looks incredible. Or at least an 8-bit style. Oh yeah, to get back, you just have to wait for these bubbles to get back. Up. So yeah, what we learned about this level so far, dragon shoot bubbles. Dragons also make very good platforms. Skeletons are a pain in the ass. And it's always a good thing to hit through. Also, shovels are one of the best weapons in, are one of the best weapons in the system. So, that's actually quite a few things you can learn from uh, playing video games, especially this one. Here's what I'll show you about the uh, checkpoint thing, by the way. Come on. Oh yeah, so I've literally bashed the absolute crap out of this and it's not breaking. Maybe it's something that's only a thing in late levels, or maybe I need to level up a bit before I can really do that. Maybe I need some upgrade. Well, I kind of made an idiot myself there. I thought it was possible in this level. Oh yeah, on that jump you have to be careful because you could easily jump into that bottomless pit and uh, lose your gem. Four gems there. Of course, you have to be really careful on some of these jumps because they can easily kill you. Is it going to allow me to break this one? Nope. Apparently, you can't do it on the intro stage. Cerulean Coward. He could have come up with a better nickname for him, could he? And that was totally sarcastic there. I mean, that was just horrible. Oh yeah, this boss can be a total pain in the ass. His attack pattern is quite random, so what you've essentially got to do is like... Oh yeah, he also has your exact move set, so it's... He's also got magic, which is a little bit of an unfair advantage, initially. It is possible to, uh... 
to some degree predict what he's doing. So yeah, when he laughs like that, he generally just leaves him himself vulnerable, so... Oh yeah, when he jumps down like that, the best thing to do is uh, just jump over him as he lands down and just do like a downward attack. So yeah, that's the first, uh, that's the first level taken down. Oh yeah, these things are like bonus stages. So it's like the first time you clear a level, you have to like, There we go. Another thing you can do is, um, you can actually break down these, uh, you can actually break down the campfire and anything else nearby. So that you can just get some more gems. Anyway, I'm going to end the video from here. I'm probably going to be doing Let's Play videos every day or every other day. It really depends on my work schedule. But, yeah. Shovel Knight is definitely something I want to play till the end. On, on the last C4 I had, I didn't quite play it to the end. I got to, like, the Polar Knight stage, then kind of gave up on it. But, I actually intend to see this through to the end. So, uh, if you like my video, please click the subscribe button. And thanks for watching. Ciao.